Take a trip to the past and learn how the Man of Steel's own personal story mirrored that of the Mongol that is. All this and more on the pages of Action Comics Annual 2022 number one. Well, isn't this interesting? We got here a big special issue that, while not a continuation of Philip Kennedy Johnson's War World Saga, actually does do a pretty good job creating more depth and complexity when it comes to the Mongol that is in his quest to take down Superman. For this, we go back in time many years to Smallville when Clark was still a child. One day while playing soccer, young Clark used his super breath to make a goal that he probably shouldn't have been able to. Ma Kent gives him quite the talking to afterwards, saying that that's no way to use his powers, but Clark says he only wanted to do it because a new kid, Caleb, kept getting under his skin. Apparently, this kid has been terrorizing the school ever since he got there, and even Ma Kent admits the kid's father is something of a menace as well, but still, that doesn't make it right. Clark is, after all, in a unique position. He has power. He's never not felt special. And for this kid, maybe winning that game, making that goal could have changed everything. And that these are hard lessons that Clark is going to have to learn as he gets older. It's at that moment, too, Caleb ends up kicking a soccer ball at Ma Kent's head, knocking off a wig. Yes, it would seem at some point in her life, Martha Kent actually had a major battle against cancer, one that her and husband John didn't want to reveal to their son just yet. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does any of this have? have to do with the Mongol that is, well, for that, we head on over to an ancient war world during the Culling Day, which is exactly what it sounds like. Mothers from the Warzoon tribes would give up their children to battle each other in a bloody royale. The losers of this battle would either die or be exiled, and things aren't going so well for little Mongol who is. He actually had the chance to kill one of his opponents, but decided not to, figuring stabbing someone in the back would be a very un honorable thing to do. This, of course, infuriates the Mongol who is mother, who sticks very much to the ancient ways of the war zone, and the only way you dishonor yourself in this place is if you don't kill when the chance shows itself. We can actually see things are pretty rough for the Mongol who is mother, as she's older than a lot of the other brood wives of the current Mongol, but that she also takes absolutely no shit from the other women choosing to dice one up during the actual culling ritual. Now again, you probably probably don't need me to tell you, nor do you need to be an English lit major to figure out that these origin stories for a young Mongol and a young Superman are meant to mirror one another. It's one of those there but for the grace go I kind of stories. We see Superman at a time in his life when he was using his powers in maybe a selfish way that he shouldn't have, while also getting to see that a young Mongol who is actually did have his own code of honor in the beginning and believed in mercy only to have it completely beaten out of him by his mother and society. Now, back on Earth, a young Clark thinks that he should sneak out in the night and steal Caleb's bike. That would be a good way to get back at him for what he did to his mother. It's while there, though, he ends up overhearing Caleb getting abused by his alcoholic father. Apparently, Caleb's mother abandoned him shortly after he was born, leaving him with his father, and the situation has only gotten worse since then. Young Clark actually ends up intervening when Caleb's father in a drunken stupor almost crashes his truck into oncoming highway way traffic. Heck, Clark even goes the extra mile to drag the man's bloody body to the hospital so he can be saved. It's while there, Clark ends up seeing his own mother undergoing chemotherapy and a nice little bit of visual storytelling. I like that Martha is wearing an S letter for Smallville on her sweater, which also looks very much like a proto-Superman S. The idea being that Clark, at such a young age, saw his mother face down illness and even death with poise and dignity, while also still trying trying to teach him to be a better man, to use his powers for the betterment of all mankind. It's really sweet stuff. What's less sweet is the continued story of the Mongol that is. He may have survived the Culling Tournament, but him and his mother still end up getting exiled from their tribes and sent to go die in the wastes. Mongol's mother vows a bloody revenge, saying that her son is the true sire of this planet and will one day return to overthrow the current Mongol and claim his throne for himself. Now, you might be thinking now that these two are on their own with only each other to rely on, this would be a good opportunity for mother and son to grow a lot closer. It, that's not the case at all. In fact, Mama Mongol takes this opportunity to be even colder and crueler to her son, saying that it's the only way that he will learn to grow up to be a powerful war zone. It doesn't happen all at once. In fact, young Mongol who is goes out of his way to try and feed his mother and tend to her wounds, and you know what he gets out of it? A beating. For this tribe of war world does not heal, it does 
not build, it only destroys. Now back in Smallville, Caleb goes at Clark again about his mother's cancer when they're playing soccer again. Clark, learning his lesson, rolls with the punches, both literal and figuratively. But it's then something rather interesting happens. You see, the other kids start making fun of Caleb for having such a sloppy drunk as a father, and Clark actually steps on in to defend him. Which in turn only makes Caleb that much angrier until Clark says, you know you don't have to be like him, right? While off in the distance, we can see that Ma Kent actually did end up managing to make the game after all, and watches on in pride knowing that her son has learned the right lessons. Now, what happens when a child ends up learning a wrong lesson? Well, we check back on in with the Mongol who is and his mother many years in the future. They end up getting cornered by the cannibal tribe of Warzoons. Only, before they can be killed and assumedly ate, they all end up coming under attack by a bull mammoth, a legendary creature of Warworld who it's said the current Mongol actually slayed long ago. Mama Mongol, out of character, actually ends up stepping between her son and the bull mammoth, getting a couple good shots in, but ultimately getting so injured that she's gonna die. Her son wonders why she would do such a thing, but eventually it becomes clear that this is her own sort of sick, twisted gift to her son. That if he kills her now in her weakened state, it will earn him all the respect in the world of the cannibal tribe, that he will be allowed to continue to live, to grow strong, and one day even return strong enough to punish his old tribe and his father Mongol, who abandoned them both to die in the wastes. Now, back with the Kents on Earth, it seems that Martha's cancer is finally in remission. She's going to make a big recovery, and it seems that Caleb has actually made some big life choices, too. He's choosing to go and stay with his aunt in Metropolis. Before he leaves, though, he wants to apologize to Martha and even make amends for what he did. He shaved his own head so she could have a wig made of real hair. Clark had actually tried to do this himself, but unfortunately, what with the super genes, his hair just wouldn't cut. In Clark's own internal monologue, he says he often wonders what became of Caleb, and many years later, he actually looked him up in Metropolis. It seems that he's actually teaching an after-school soccer program for wayward youths just like himself. Clark remembers what his mother had told him all those years ago, that some poor people go their whole lives feeling unloved, feeling useless, feeling unspecial. But that sometimes if you can go out of your way to change those people's hearts and minds, well, you'll be surprised what ends up happening. Because sometimes the hardest part about being a hero is knowing when to awaken the hero in other people. Sadly, though, in the case of Mongol, that is, the opposite can sometimes also be true and that the inner villain can also be awakened. We see an older Mongol who is returned many years later to his old tribe, having slayed the bull mammoth and claimed its poison stinger. He uses it to kill a couple of his old tribe mates before continuing on to his actual goal of overthrowing his father and being the one to hold all the chains. And so there you have it, everyone. Action Comics Annual 2022 number one. And I gotta say, this one was a real doozy. In fact, I'd say it's probably a really good encapsulation of everything that I've really been liking about this Philip Kennedy Johnson era on Superman so far, and that is we really dig into the morality play that is the life of Superman. You know, he's not the greatest hero, the hero that all other heroes compare themselves to because he's always right or because he has the most powers, but because he truly tries to think about what's right for everyone, even when he himself is tempted to not do those sorts of things because, well, at the end of the day, he is still human, too. This is also a nice little focus piece for the Mongol that is, too, Philip Kennedy Johnson's new spin on the classic Superman foe that I think has actually made him more of a threat than he's been in decades. It's not just that this new Mongol is a complete inverse of Superman's own ideology, one who ends up venerating survival of the fittest, slavery and cruelty above all else. But at one point, he too was also a child who had ideas of mercy and not wanting to kill just because it's what society expected of him. To think if he and Superman could have met as boys, Clark probably could have helped him along in the same way he helped Caleb along. And that's what makes this story such an effective tragedy too. It's another classic case of there but for the grace go I. Throw in some great Spurrier artwork and I think you got a real winner here. Maybe one of the strongest issues of Philip Kennedy Johnson's time on the Superman title. Overall, I'd give this one a much well-deserved 9 out of 10. 
Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.